I want this to get to the, to the highest degrees in Columbia University, NYU University, and all the Ivies. I'm shy that we die. I'm shy that we die. I'm a professor. I'm an Israeli professor at Columbia Business School. I was there on Thursday when the president of Columbia University and its board of trustees allowed for a pro-Hamas rally in the name of free speech. And we have to remember, in all throughout history, there have been good people and there have been bad people. And there was the silent majority. And the president of Columbia University, all most of its deans, and its board of trustees, they are the silent majority. In the name of freedom of speech, they are allowing thousands of students, staff, and faculty to explicitly, explicitly support and publicly support Hamas, a terror organization. We would never have had this. You would never imagine at Columbia University, NYU, Harvard, anywhere else, you would never imagine that they would allow a pro-KKK rally. They would never allow a pro-Al-Qaeda or pro-ISIS. Yet when it comes to Israeli lives, when it comes to Jewish lives, they allow a pro-Hamas rally. I want you to think about that for a second. And, I want, and this is why I think it's important that everybody knows. I'm a professor at Columbia University. There are other professors here. We have the best minds in the world. We have the best institutions. But parents that are thinking now to send your kids to our university, I can tell you this, they will, great, they will get the best education, but we cannot protect your lives because the president of Columbia University will not take action to protect the lives of its Israeli students and Jewish students. I feel strongly because this is my employer. This is the person that supposed to, to guard me, and yet I feel unsafe to go into my own office. And it's happening all around this country, at Harvard, at NYU, at Stanford, at Georgetown. Think of any, almost every university, there is someone there higher up in the administration that is being silent at best or vocally in support of Hamas at worst. And these are people that at peaceful times would come out and say, we love everybody, safe spaces, but they won't give us a safe space. Now I want to say one thing. There have been a lot of organizations, social justice organizations, that have, that have um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, that have expressed their support for Hamas after the atrocity, the slaughter, the butchering of Saturday. And I want to say one thing. We will never leave you alone. We are going to support you. We will still march for the lives of victimized African Americans. We will still march for the lives of victimized immigrants and LGBTQ. But we need you now. We need your support now. Because victims are victims are victims. It does not matter if the victim is white or black, Jewish or not Jewish. We need you now. And your silence at best or your explicit support of Hamas is a dagger in our hearts. And there's already been a 500% increase in anti-Semitism incidents in New York City within one week. 500% increase. Let that imagine a 500% increase in incident of racial violence. Us, Israelis and Jews, we would never, never keep quiet. And yet your silence, your support of Hamas, and I will say by name, the president of Columbia University and all of its board of trustees by allowing a rally where they they call the slaughter of Saturday, the pogrom of Saturday, a successful act of resistance. And the president hides behind freedom of speech. That is support of Hamas. That is support of ISIS. That is support of the KKK.
and I, and, I, and I promise you now, I am not tenure track. In, in the academic lingo, I am the most vulnerable. I can lose my job. But I will never, never teach even a single student that expresses support for Hamas. Because I will never teach a single student that expresses support for Al-Qaeda. I would never teach a single student who expresses support in the KKK. You can hold your opinions. That is, you're free to believe what you want. But when you march in the streets supporting a terror organization, when we not only have not buried our dead, we have yet to identify our dead. We don't know how many dead there are, and yet they are marching in the street in this support. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Also, my two-year-old daughter here, I'm, I'm really trying to hold this together for her, for my seven-year-old son. But when the world says never again once a year in Holocaust Remembrance Day, this is now. Never again is now. And I want you, thank you very much for, for listening. I want you to share this as widely as possible.